Hello, everybody, and welcome to Three Point Perspective, the podcast about illustration, how to do it, how to make a living at it, and how to make an impact in the world with your art. I'm Jake Parker. I'm Lee White. And I'm Will Terry. All three of us are professional illustrators and have been working for about the last 25 years. We've worked with just about every major publisher and publication in the business. Uh, together, we've published probably over 100 books. We've been saying 50, but it's probably over 100. And <laughs> we've all taught illustration at the universities. That's right. I'd say our book counts over 1,000, maybe. <laughs> 10,000. 10, Are we counting <laughs> copies uh, printed? <laughs> We should just yeah sure. <laughs> we should just up the number every time. I'm counting individual pages. Um, yes, each week we're going to come at you with a different topic. Sometimes we're going to agree. Sometimes we're going to argue, like today. Uh, but each time you're going to learn something brand spanking new. All right, updates. What's going on in the world of Lee White? I am into finished art on my book. I'm so excited to be doing finished art. Um, it's just so, so much fun after such a long period of sketching. So I'm just cruising through these things. And what's nice is I did color studies and I'm just kind of going through them without thinking. I have music on, I got my coffee and it's just, it's like, it's what being an illustrator is all about, in my opinion, like this phase of the project. It's like the movie poster for illustration. You're actually living yeah. out. I'm doing the actual <laughs> not the part reality. of being an illustrator. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's great. I got a couple projects going, and and I'm doing all these paintings, um, big paintings for my show. So uh, so I'm actually feeling pretty pretty artsy right now. That's good. You look artsy. You're looking good. Oh, I yeah, I feel artsy. I should all have right, paint well, on about, me. That would make me more authentic. That's true. And a smock. And a I got a smock. I'm gonna go get it. <laughs> well, how about you? What's up with you? Oh, I'm getting ready to send my secret project off to my editor, and. Uh, so that's been fun uh, compiling that. Is and this secret project going to, going to be self-published or are you looking to find a publisher? I'm not going to say yet. Okay. I'm and is your editor... My chest. So your editor is a freelance editor. Yeah. Okay. I still owe you uh, something for that project, by the way, which is coming right when we hang up, right when we get done with this podcast. It's coming your way. You do. Yeah. Also... Um, also, I've got a pretty good distraction going on right now that I'm not going to talk about. Just All right, <laughs> man. Will is is a God. You're a, va- a you're, you're what do they call it on Facebook? Uh, yeah, you're a vague booker. A you're vague just booker. mentioning things that you can't talk about. <laughs> yeah. Well, today sure was terrible. <laughs> Why was it terrible? Not saying. <laughs> not saying. I don't want to share. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, let's move into the 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 meat. Actually, I didn't update myself. We just <laughs> yeah. What are, you doing? Skip skip you. what are you doing? Jake's got his new studio going on. I'm doing skip book. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I don't know. That was, that was a dumb joke. That was All right. Bad. What's going on with me is I um, uh, I just went up to Utah this last weekend to get my studio. Uh, as you know. I've, Moving down to Arizona, and I did it in waves. So we brought the family's stuff, and I left like I brought just a um, a portable studio, I guess, just a desk and my computer uh, setup. And I went back to get my reference library, um, all my shop stuff, uh, my my books that I sell online. All that stuff is now down here in Arizona with me, and it feels good to be like I feel like I'm. Uh, ready to just create and to, to get, you know, to get busy. So that's nice. You, so you're feeling a little more settled in other words. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. What hat, what hat are you wearing right now? Uh, this hat I'm wearing, I found it in the ocean actually. (laughs) It looks like that. (laughs) It's like a, it's like the hat equivalent of a, a, of a Hawaiian shirt. So it's got like a beach pattern on it it's, it's and, definitely uh, a thing it's a thing <laughs> yeah i brought it home washed it and um and now i just wear it so yeah mm. it's good it's 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 you know everybody has sort of like a signature uh look to them like a a certain style and i mm-hmm. always was like what's my sign- signature element so you think of like um uh you know Steven Spielberg has those dark, gla- not dark glasses, but like he's got like 
rimmed glasses that he wears. Right, right, right. And, and know, then the black Martin's, turtleneck from Steve Jobs. And, yeah. Martin yeah. Scorsese has like even thicker black rimmed glasses. So I was like, well, what's, what's me? You know, what, what am I going to do? And I found this hat and I'm like, there it is. I don't know, man. We might want to shop a few different looks around and then we'll what about this? see which ones. What about this nose thing you're wearing? Oh, okay. bruiser. The people, okay, on, yes. the people on the podcast can't see, but... Yeah, if, you, you. if there's ever a time you guys want to go look at this on video on our YouTube channel, uh, you're going to want to see Jake because he's been beat up pretty bad this week. <laughs> so I have a huge bruise on on the ri- the ridge of my nose, and it's because I there's a um, a bunch of art thieves running out of a <laughs> gallery stealing artwork, and I was like, no, you guys can't do that. <laughs> And uh, I had said it just like that. Hey, you guys, you can't 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 do that. that. You you can't do that. (laughs) Who's going to stop us? Uh, No, what really happened? (laughs) What really happened was the sliding glass door was closed when I thought it was open. (laughs) (laughs) I I rammed right into it. The art thieves is way more interesting. I like the desert. The desert wolves story. But (laughs) all right, let's get down to it. Uh, this is the style episode. We're going to talk all about style today. And I want to start off um, describing each other's style. I don't want us to describe our own style. I want the other two of us to describe the third person style. Whoa. So, Will, how would you describe Lee's style? If I'm nice about this, will you guys be nice back? No, <laughs> we're going to be honest. <laughs> it shouldn't be. This is it, wait. Do you need to clarify that? Is there some kind of negative barb that you're going to work in? <laughs> okay, I'll I mean, I'll start. I'll, I'll describe Lee's. So Lee, I'm jealous of Lee's style in that uh, he's figured out how to combine the loose with the tight at mm-hmm. the same time. So he has loose pattern, loose texture. Lots of texture sometimes, uh, a lot of uh, and and coming up with a texture that is feels organic is often mm-hmm. really hard, and he's kind of mastered that. I'm I'm a little bit thank jelly. You, thank you, thank that. you. Mm-hmm. Um, but for him, is, oh, go ahead. Well, the pro- the problem that that most people have when they try to do what he's doing with illustration is they don't figure out how to get tight. And when I mean when I say tight, I mean fine detail drawing in areas that really matter like hands and faces and Mm -hmm. other key details that are storytelling details. So he's Mm -hmm. able to let your imagination run by not. So one of the big problems that illustrators have in general is we over illustrate, we over tighten up, we illustrate too much Mm -hmm. and we take people out of the imagination and we, we lock down uh, descriptions that aren't important with details. Mm-hmm. He's figured that out. Mm-hmm. And muted yeah. color, muted colors. Yeah, that's good. That's a good way to describe it. I would describe it like if I were trying to do a tight drawing um, in a moving vehicle and I had my watercolors and, and pencils <laughs> and everything set up and I'm trying to, do, <laughs> trying to draw and, and make a, a straight line, <laughs> I would get Lee's style. So you somehow, I don't know how you do it sitting still, but you've got, you could really see your hand in the style. I think that's cool. Yeah. It's uh, my ner- nervous energy. No, actually when I'm making lines, sometimes I do erase, sometimes I'll get a really good line and I'll, I'll erase that one. Oh, wow. To get, to get the more organic line. That's cool. Hmm. All right, Lee, describe Will's style. Be nice. Will's style, if I had to just kind of sum it up, is stylized rendering or stylized realism. I don't know if we're not stylized rendering, I guess is a good way to do it because there's a, there's a tightness to it, but you, but he has a, a definite control on all the details and he knows how to control his values. So it never seems overwhelming, but it is, it's nuanced to the nth degree. Like you could keep zooming in. There's never a point where you're like, okay, this is the point where it gets sloppy. It doesn't get sloppy anywhere. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a nice, like, subtle texture to it. I think your styles evolved, Will's styles evolved a lot over the years. As um, uh, I just pulled up, just Googled Will Terry, and I see some of the old, older stuff that was more contrasty um, that I like, I like less than I like what you're doing now. It seems like you're, you've figured out your value mm-hmm. balance. Um, but there's a real nice stylized 
component to it and shape control. It's all very friendly and very round, um, round shapes. That's definitely one I would describe with Will. There's, you know, as I'm, as I'm sliding through as a Google search, it's all these just really friendly rounded shapes. Um, a lot of color, but not the color doesn't fight itself, but, uh, but yeah, but it's, it's nuanced, um, Mm -hmm. I guess to, to, to a really fine degree. I would describe Will's style as um, like blocky, almost like uh, uh, what, what are those like toys that you would get as a little kid, like Duplo or <laughs> um, play, not Playmobil, but um, the, the little guys with the big round heads. Uh, I forget the name of those toys. Bobbleheads? No, no, they're not bobbleheads, but they're like they're like the G. toys G. you give G. a, a preschooler. G.I. Joe dolls. <laughs> <laughs> They're like toys you give a preschooler, right? So uh-huh. all the shapes are very soft and round and approachable. Um, it's, it's a childlike, like, playful style. Like an erector um, set. The Not like an erector set. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Just making stuff up. <laughs> little people. Little people. That's what they're called. Um, little people. Uh, oh, yeah. It, you know... Yeah. They're like the little people are like their 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 proportions are two heads tall. Yeah, you know half the half of it's the head, yeah, the other half's the body. I um, stepped on those in the middle of the night when I had yeah. kids. Yeah, so so it's like little people meets um, uh, detailed rendering and definitely like uh, a, a lot of attention paid to light and shadow and how light and color work together. Like so much of your your stuff just. Um, looks like it's 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 well lit, you know. The sun's in the right spot, the the interior lighting or the window is in the right spot, and all your characters have this. You're gonna add that now that I'm thumbing through it, and Jake's mentioning that everything. There's always a direct light. It's very cinematic lighting. You're controlling mm-hmm. like in the scene light sources that don't exactly mimic what what happens in nature. There's like multiple light sources that have different degrees of color and, and, Mm -hmm. um, and intensity. Yeah. And I don't do that at all. So Mm -hmm. it's just, it's a lot different. We're all three very different. And I love that. All right. So how would you, Will, how would you describe my style? Your style, um, is, uh, based in, I would say your style is based in drawing. Mm-hmm. Um, you get you you always see the line work, I, I, I love that. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it's um, and so lot, so I'm just going to describe just throw out things that I that I notice when I look at your stuff. Style, gesture is very important. Weight, your characters always feel. I'm I'm always amazed at how you capture a really natural. Uh, it feel. I mean, I know it's probably your animation background, but like your your robots or your or your creatures and stuff feel like they're in mid movement. They're not static, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's. I think that's something that's really hard to capture uh, for most people. Mm-hmm. You you nailed that. That's pretty cool. So yeah. So line work but, and weight to character. Uh huh. But the other thing is you're you're not locked into one way of rendering you've got like four or five or even six different ways of of mm-hmm. rendering um from more of a comic book style where you can go to black in the shadows to mm-hmm. really subtle uh lighting and and uh and sh- you know shadow and light so it's hard to nail you down because you know you're you kind of jump around a little bit which is cool but it all fits within the jake parker brand brand yeah. So, Lee, how would you describe it? There's definitely a focus on on sub the subject matter is definitely there's a Jake Parker subject matter in my opinion. There's mm-hmm. a, there's a style to the to the work too, mm-hmm. but there's a subject matter as I'm as I'm scrolling through your kind of Google search. There's definitely this kind of tech futuristic element that comes up over and over. And I mean, even though I don't think subject matter is style, definitely not as much with Will and me. As it is you, um, mm. there's a definite Jake Parker interest in 
future fantasy tech um, mm-hmm. that kind of leans the work a, a certain direction, regardless of the style. And I agree with Will that there's, I think there's three distinct styles that you have. There's this line heavy, more comic book influence, or I would say not even comic book influence. It's almost graphic novel influenced, in my opinion. A little mm-hmm. Mike Mignola kind of look, a mm-hmm. um, little, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of people, some French comics illustrators in there uh and that's kind of one style and then there's this hybrid style that is your it's kind of sky heart look mm-hmm. where there is line but it's the line's now muted and you're not getting those heavy dark blacks and then your children's book style actually goes towards a more i don't want to call it rendered but there's this haziness to it there's there's mm-hmm. less emphasis on line work looks like you're spending more time getting a little bit more natural effect so there's like kind of three jake parkers but all three of them share that future tech um subject matter and, okay. and, and your sense of sensi- sensibility and drawing too. Cool. All right. So let me ask you guys this. Uh, we'll start with Lee. Who was your, like, who was your biggest influences in how you uh, developed your style? Like what artist, when you saw them, you're like, okay, that's, that gets me, I get them. And this is what I want to do. Yeah. The first, the first person who hit me like that was, uh, Arthur Rackham. Mm. When I saw his work, I was just, I was so blown away at the way he's stylizing everything. And, and that was the first time indication of watercolor, even though I didn't come, come to watercolor for a number of years. When I saw Arthur Rackham, I was like, man, that guy's got something going on. And then, and then through that kind of lineage, uh, it would have been Lisbeth Werger Mm -hmm. that, kind of changed everything she could i mean she's the only person who can just paint like a simple house on a simple hill with no clouds in the sky a big dominant sky mm-hmm. and it looks great and there's nothing there i mean there's like three shapes in the whole thing and she didn't try to render the driveway going up and and didn't try to win, render a bunch of trim on the housing you know the windows on the house and it just looks so good and i mean i'm still enthralled enthralled with her, with her um stuff and i mean there, and there's there's like a couple more significant ones i don't know how far you want me to go but give us two more two more because i see <laughs> Elizabeth river in your work i don't see arthur rackham i think that that was a surprise well, to me he was just a he was kind of a jumping off point uh-huh. and 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 remember like as i was going through this this phase of development i was a realist you know i was doing very right. realistic drawing and very realistic yeah. painting when i was into him and that kind of pulled me out of that a little bit because he was stylizing that stuff um Mark English, mm. massive influence, especially going into some of the fine art stuff um, that I'm doing even now. And way back then, like I saw when I saw Mark English, I was like, that guy has it right. And I still feel that way. I think mm-hmm. I think there's just something so perfect about the way he paints and the way he draws. Um, one of the best, one of the absolute best. And then and then um, Gary Kelly was huge for a number of years. Not as much anymore. Uh, just because I've changed my sensibilities, but I loved how, how quirky and he had this kind of cubist mm-hmm. thing that he was doing, but still making these really beautiful and, and appropriate images for kids books. It didn't look like he's just aping the style of cubism, um, to be, you know, clever. He just right. really implemented it in his own way. And he had, there's a certain, all, all these artists, in my opinion, have a certain grace and I, mm-hmm. I don't know what other word to use. And there's an elegance to the work. And, and I hope and, 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 you know, that's what I strive for is that there is a grace to the work that I make. Um, and I don't think I've hit any of those people that I mentioned. They're all just so good, mm-hmm. but they're those, and those five have been just consistent and, um, and I still aspire to them. Okay. Cool. Will, what about you? Who are your big inspirations? So I, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not pretentious like Lee, you know, to, to, to come up with the, uh, you know, the old school Arthur Rackham type people and stuff. I'm more, you know, I'm more realistic and honest, uh, with my, <laughs> with my influences. And so I'm more, I'm, I look toward, toward I've looked towards more contemporary artists. Um, mm-hmm. so when I was in school, my main heroes and, and still today, um, some of these people are probably not as recognizable as others, but Lane Smith, Mm. uh, really like his work. And what I liked about him is, you know, and he's still a children's book illustrator today, but one of the things that I really love about his work is he's not afraid to be really innovative with the abbreviations he makes visually. Mm -hmm. So, so heavily stylized. And when I looked 
especially in school, I would look at his work and I'm like, how do you give yourself permission to draw the way you draw? I, I don't know how mm -hmm. else to describe it. How to, um, I mean, he goes back and forth between 2D and 3D, which is, right. and he balances that really well. Um, right. Steve Johnson. And so much ah. texture, too, to his stuff as yeah. well. Like. I, see, I see your work. I see his influence in your work now mm -hmm. that you mentioned Oh, really? It. Cool. Um, Steve Johnson. Uh, I've just always loved his stuff. He's a children's book illustrator. You can look him up. Uh, my favorite book from him was the, the Frog Prince Continued. Wait, isn't that a, isn't that a husband-wife combo? Yeah, and Lou Fancher. But, but I, yeah. I found him before he was working with her. Oh, okay. So I just, and, but anyway, his book, The Frog Prince Continued, which was a collaboration with um, John Cheska was, that was my Bible. I, I had to break away from him and from Mary Grand Prix, who's also a very mm -hmm. contemporary illustrator and someone who I've actually been able to work with slightly just in, in the last few months. So um, I could yeah, see, like, yeah, Mary, I had to put her work away too. Both of those guys, I, you know, I was. I was solving problems the way they would solve problems. And finally I'm like, okay, I need to, I need to branch off. Yeah. Uh, Gary, I'll see your Gary, Gary Kelly. Cause Gary Kelly was, uh, I mean, the, those illustrations that he was doing in the, in the, uh, early nineties. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh. Just gorgeous. Well, that's when you were, when were you in college? Early nineties. Early nineties. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's when, that's when you're like, figuring stuff out and you're doing a, maybe I don't know how you guys were did it but doing some copies or some oh, master yeah. studies yeah it and, starts uh, leaning your work a lot there's a lot more influence back then when mm -hmm. you see somebody that's really nailing it in your opinion than it is than there is now yeah in my opinion and I think that's because of the internet because now you have you can consume amazing artwork all day long and never mm -hmm. you can never get to the end of uh, Instagram when, when, you know, before the internet, we would get an illustration annual from CA once, once a year and we would get mm -hmm. the Society of Illustrators annual once a year. And, and, you know, maybe you'd see a workbook or a showcase, but you got a refreshing of il new illustration once a year, basically, from mm -hmm. those publications. And that was it. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't yep. see much other illustration unless you bought a magazine or something. And so right. that's a good point. Yeah. Right. I remember uh, you had the, for me, it was, I, I was hugely influenced by like newspaper comic strips. Mm. So I had the daily, you know, the strips that would show up in the daily paper. Then Sunday they were in color. That was awesome because you got to see how these, how these guys would color it. Mostly I was looking at um, Bill Watterson and um, like, I liked Foxtrot as well, the more simplified style that he was doing. But Bill Watterson was like my main, one of my main influences growing up. But then the books would come out, his collections would come out twice a year. So there would be a collection of like a black and white collection. And then he'd come out with uh, black and white with colored strips in it. And I would get all those books. So I would get one for... Um, my birthday and I'd get one for Christmas and my birthday was in May and or it's still in May and Christmas, you know, it was in <laughs> December. So it was like this nice, uh, 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 amount of time for me to really consume and digest and just understand what was happening with the line work in those books. So if I were to say my influences, it would be early on, it would be Bill Watterson. I still see things that I draw to this day that, I learned from Calvin and Hobbes. And like mm. just the other day, as I was going through books, I see this Calvin Hobbes book and I'm flipping through it and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that's my, that right there, that's where I got it from. That's, I can't <laughs> say it's my style, but that's the style I draw in, right? So that's there's so that. Funny. And then, I, then I discovered comic books. I found a comic shop. Um, and this was again in the 90s. Uh, I'm a, bit, a little bit younger than you guys. So um, uh, I was, it was interesting when I was in my early twenties is when the inter internet really became ubiquitous. And, um, but prior to that, there was a lot of development happening artistically for me. And so the comic shop was huge and I was exposed to a bunch of American artists, but also they imported a bunch of Japanese comics. And so, um, I really fell in love with a handful of Japanese artists. And what happened was I started mixing the Bill Watterson style with the tech 
that the Japanese would do. They'd draw these cool mechs and these cool like soldiers and, and technology and stuff like that, spaceships and things. And so by combining those, I, um, I kind of fell in love with that subject matter, but also a style that was very much heavily line based um, because that's what they did. They drew in pen and ink uh, just on white paper. And then maybe later they would add color. And I came to color kind of late. I never felt comfortable with it. Um, and I just learned how to color in Photoshop. And I, I never oil painted before. I've touched acrylics maybe twice. Um, if, if anything, I've painted a lot with watercolor and that's because Bill Watterson <laughs> did watercolor and I could see what he was doing and kind of, I could mimic that a little bit. Um, and so that's, that's where I, I would hit my influences. So it's like Bill Watterson, it's, um, Yukito Kishiro or, or Sh- Masamune Shiro in, um, in Japan who did Battle Angel Alita and Appleseed, uh, respectively. And then, um, like Will or Lee was saying, you could see a little bit of like French line art style in there. Um, and there, there's a French artist named Mobius who also was like a huge um, influence on me. So that said, that's that's a lot for my comic stuff. For my children's book illustrations, though, um, I I everything starts with my drawing style. It's the rendering that kind of changes. So I think if you if you can look past the rendering, you could still see like that's a Jake Parker drawing. Uh, but just imagine it being rendered like, okay, now I'm going to render in pencil. Now I'm going to render in watercolor. Now I'm going to render in pen and ink, or now I'm going to render digitally. It's just me putting like a different coat of paint on the same house, you know? Uh-huh. Um, uh, but for children's books, I've started doing like the last three or four children's books have been a line style an inking line style. And so that's, Bill Watterson mixed with Dr. Seuss, basically, is what I'm trying to get there. I can see the Dr. Seuss thing now that you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In terms of the coloring with the flat fills and stuff. And- <clears throat> yeah. that's a, And that, that came from working on Horton Who's a Who in the animation, when I worked in animation. Um, I didn't know you did the, that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was in the art department, and they, they bought every single Dr. Seuss book that he'd ever done. We had like 50 books there. And there's books I never heard of, <laughs> like legitimate children's books that he did that I'd never seen before. And we we memorized those books. We looked at everything. How did, how did Dr. Seuss draw a wheel? Okay, now how did he do like an airplane? Okay, now how would he do like a school building, right? And so we would c- look at those and combine things. And, and that's how we created Horton Hears a Who, like the style. If Even if there was something he hadn't designed in one of his books, we were able to pull his style um, and and extrapolate what that would look like. Um, so cool. And so when I when I started doing children's books in this line style, I I think I dipped into that Dr. Seuss s- stuff that I learned while working working on that. Okay, so I bring this up wh- uh, how to describe our styles. I know this is like um, so far this episode is pretty like um, uh, you know, self-focused, what's that called? Self, uh, like egotistical, (laughs) maybe I don't know. (laughs) We're very much focused on ourselves, but the reason I bring all this up is, is when you're thinking, you listening to this podcast or thinking about your style and how you draw or whether or not you felt like you come up with a style, I want you to think about what we've talked about here. Number one, how we've described our styles, of each other and then what influences we've looked at to um, develop our own styles. All right. So I want to ask you guys, how did you, based on the style that you work in now, based on your um, influence that you've had, how did you actually develop the style that you're working, that you're working in now? Was it deliberate or was it just something naturally that happened? Uh, Go for it, Will. Um, Yeah. I mean, I, I could not, I could not generate illustrations without looking at other illustrators when I was in school. Um, Mm -hmm. and I couldn't draw very well and I didn't know how to draw things out of my, excuse me, out of my head. Um, I didn't have a good working method. So I relied so much on finding good reference, finding good, uh, illustrators that had solved the problems I was trying to solve. 
And naturally, I gravitated towards that, the short list that I read, but there were many other illustrators as well. Heinrich Drescher comes to mind. Um, and, um, and then I became, I mean, bluntly, I became jealous of their styles in, in a mm-hmm. good way. You know, like I, you know, I just loved it so much that I was like, it just spoke to me. And so, yeah, I started copying and I would, I would come to class and my classmates would say, oh, definitely looking at so-and-so, you know, like that looks uh-huh. exactly like the same. That's always an embarrassing little bit of a moment it is, in my opinion. It is. But you know what? Um, um, yeah, I mean, I knew, I knew when I was getting too close because I would hear that, um, you know, like, wow. <laughs> you really yeah, but I think it's necessary. It is for it for really development. is, and I don't think I that think we the were embarrassing part. The embarrassing part there is trying to pass it off as your own, right? You know, and 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 really, I think as as, as I became a teacher um, of illustration, I would encourage my students to look at other people. Don't hide your influences. Um, celebrate it in class. This is class work. This is this is not professional work. There's a time to to learn this way. And then over time, put that away. (laughs) I had a student one time, I mean, I've had a lot of students that have kind of mimicked my work, but, but I had one that absolutely couldn't do anything without basically taking an illustration of mine and, and yours was his style guide. It was a style guide completely. And, and then the other students started giving him crap and, you know, and I and I had talked to him and said, you know, it doesn't bother me at all as long as, you know, when you leave school, you you'll have to in order to do your own work, you'll have to put it away and, and try to solve things on your own. And he never did, to, to my knowledge. And I, you know, I saw him for years and years after school on Facebook and he never he never did uh, figure out how to. You know, I th- and I, the other thing I think is don't just follow one person. You know, he got really locked mm-hmm. into the way I was solving things like if you at least follow three to five other people, you should start to combine those three to five people into one unique style mm-hmm. as, as long as they're different. Right. Mm-hmm. So, but just to speak to Jake's question, <laughs> you're, so you're in school yeah. and you're like, okay, I got an illustration assignment. And then are you, are you actively saying, okay, look at the way Lane Smith is doing this door. I'm going to do my door that way. I mean, you, that's how you kind of, start it right yeah. i mean you have to walk down that path in a conscious way you can't yeah. just like, look at a bunch of stuff and say okay i'm just gonna do it like those people you right. have there's a there's an intention to it mm-hmm. i mean is that how you developed yeah Will? It, it is and and more than just like this is how to do how to draw these nouns you know this is these objects it was oh look at how he's letting this background fall away into nothing i would never have thought to do that mm. i would have illustrated <laughs> too much back there and and that I think learning, the actually learning what not to illustrate is probably one of the hardest things, if not the hardest thing, in illustration. When to stop rendering? Yeah. When to you know? It's it's a sensibility. When to let the background fade away, or it's a sensibility yeah. that's developed over time, and you cannot just learn it. You can't just go to class one day and go, okay, I'm not going to over illustrate. It. it takes yeah. years to learn how not to do that. So this um, this artist, sorry, well, I no, didn't want to cut good. you off. Is there anything? Okay, um, I wanted to add somebody to my list. I, I just sent Jake and Will a little um, image of it. This mm-hmm. this this woman, I think she's in the UK. Her name's Laura Carlin. Current influence, heavy influence, um, uh, and I just it's so unique because, in my opinion, there's some styles that are definitely quote unquote style, like a Gary Kelly or like a. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Lane Smith, for example, where you can say, I'm going to take that house the way they did that house on the, on that hill. And I'm going to do it that way. Or John Classen is a perfect example. Like that is a identifiable thing. You can walk down that path and mm-hmm. your style can look like that. Laura Carlin and some of these people I'm influenced by now are so raw that it would actually be hard. Even if you said, okay, I'm going to draw, I don't even know how you'd pull from it. It's because it's because the drawing style is so raw right. uh, that it's almost just you. That's all there is. And that's kind of the direction that I'm going now too. As a matter of fact, when I get to my, my images to the place where I would have called them finished four years ago, I go back and I beat them up a little bit mm. because they're almost, they're coming from that place that I consider now too polished. Uh-huh. And so I beat the crap out of them at the end. It's my last, where I used to the last stage be adding detail. 
now my last stage is wrecking stuff, mm. um, which I think gives it a little bit more natural. And again, a little bit more shows a little more hand to the artist, in my opinion. But I do want to add this little thing. I want to get you guys opinion on it. Still, even when I'm even now when, you know, doing these all this pro stuff and stuff that gets published and big clients and all that. I still feel like the work doesn't add up. When I when I look at my page, that I've got my pin, Pinterest page. And if you guys uh, who are listening are familiar with our dream portfolio, it's an assignment that I used to give where I collect basically the 20 best images I can find. And only 20 images can go in this portfolio. So if an image gets comes in, that means another one has to go out. So I only keep 20 images in it. And when I look at when I pull up that page, I still feel like I can't live up to that page. <laughs> It's, it's funny because yeah. it, I, I don't, I just want, I think it's important to say it because there's never a time, at least in my career so far that I felt like, okay, I'm good. I'm good to go. I'm the best. I'm as good as yeah, I can, can I'm, get. I'm firing all cylinders here. <laughs> I'm nailing every yeah, drawing. Nobody can beat me. Um, yeah. yeah I mean, I, I just, I feel like it pales compared to this page that I have in front of me right now. Do you guys feel that way? I, uh, I do that too. Like, um, I, and I think this comes from, like you're saying, what's cool is like, you're still pushing yourself. You're still looking for what's the next thing. What am you know, what's this next style mountain I'm going to, I'm going to climb and try to conquer. And I do the same thing too. It's like, otherwise you just get bored and it doesn't, it, for me, it doesn't get fun mm -hmm. to, to draw if I'm not exploring. Um, and so with exploring and with learning and pushing yourself comes this thing where you, you this, this almost this feeling of inferiority to, um, you know, to the, to the styles that you, or the, the other artists that you feel are like nailing it and getting it. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that's healthy and I think it's, it's good uh, so long as it doesn't, um, curtail your work. So long as you keep creating and you, and you, right. and you keep working. Um, if it, if it is, you know, becoming like, a source of depression, <laughs> you know. <laughs> now that's good to add in there too, because it, when I look at the page, all I am is inspired by it and humbled by it too. Right. It's the same right. time. So I think that's healthy. I think I think though, if you're if if it is keeping you from creating, um, then I would dial back a little bit and do what it takes to make creating fun, make mm -hmm. illustration fun for you, or at least if not fun, at least. Um, um, like, like you're, you're not spinning wheels, but like you're actually getting traction mm -hmm. with what you're doing. Yeah. Um, okay. So I want to, I want to kind of sum up what we've talked about and then transition into another area of style. So for a person developing their style, it can be done deliberately, but it also is something that's a little bit more, um, there's, there's a deliberate, but I guess a naturalness to it. So I feel like, I feel like if I were to um, be advising somebody right now, I would say get your five favorite artists that you love. And if you don't have five favorite artists, go to a library, go to Pinterest, go somewhere where you could just surround yourself with all different kinds of art and pick out five different artists that you that you love. It could be 20 too, but, but, but we could say just limit it to five because I think all of us have like a core five. And then there's you know, 20 or 50 others where we're pulling little things here and there and, and add it and adding them. But look at those five, look at how they do environments, look at how they do characters, look at how they do lighting, look at how they do textures, look at all those things, and then start creating either master studies where you're just straight up copying them or creating your own illustrations as if you were drawing like that person as if that person had that same assignment. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I did. I remember I came up with a cartoon character, uh, called Roach boy. He was this, he was this character that got, uh, fused with ro roach DNA. And, um, <laughs> and so he could like fly and he could, um, you know, resist like radioactive bombs or whatever. And he could talk to all the roaches. Right. So this is dumb character, but, I had these three favorite comic artists and I was like, what would it look like if they drew him? You know, I would love it if they, if I could call them up and have them draw him, but I can't do that. So I'm just going to draw it as if they drew him. So I had, I drew it like Mike Mignola. I drew it like Dave Johnson and I drew, drew it like, um, uh, one of my Japanese artists. I forget which one that I liked. And that was a huge learning experience because I had to go through all their work and be like, well, what pose would this guy do this character in? Okay. Now, 
how would they handle the line work? How would they handle this detail? How would they, how do they draw a boot or a goggle, you know, goggles? And I walked away with that, like just learning so much and a little piece of each one of those illustrators became a part of a part of me and a part of my work. So the advice I would give is find your five illustrators, do studies or do versions of their work um, with your own, you know, your own illustration assignment. And then I would do, once you've done that, once you've done four or five or 10 or 20 of those illustrations, I would put all the reference away and I would just sit down and create and draw what, or, or create an illustration of what comes from inside you. Mm-hmm. And right there, what you're seeing on that paper from those illustrations where you've put all that stuff away, that is going to be, um, whatever you like about that, lean into that hard and keep developing that. And that's where your style is going to come from. Would you guys agree or add anything to that or disagree? I would totally disagree. <laughs> don't do any of that <laughs> no no I that's what I've always uh, taught my students is mm-hmm. um, even if you just make a list and you say from this artist I like their line weight so line weight is going to be one of the things that I include in my style the, this, this you know influenced by this person I like the mm-hmm. color sensibilities of this other artist I like you know and you build with with a list of words, you could build a style that way by by coming up with all the things you like and and then be conscious of of um, incorporating those things. Well, I want to I want to play devil's advocate for a second here. I'm going to disagree with you, even though I actually agree with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it, it's interesting. I'm gonna, I'm going to pull from the archives. We get a lot of emails uh, from different people, you know, sending us stuff about our the podcast and, and podcast suggestions and, and, you know, their opinion on it. And we got a letter, an email recently talking about style and, and it was from somebody that was outside the U S and she was saying, it's funny to hear you guys Mm. even use the word style. She said, we don't even think about style in that way. Like, like what we're basically saying here is, is style is a conscious very, very deliberate choice. And, and I think that's unique to us three kind of saying that in art school, they did not tell me that right. at all. They, matter of fact, they pushed me way away from it. And they said, sort of what, what this person who wrote to us said was, you start with life drawing and your style will naturally evolve from that experience. I, I don't know if I agree with that um, because you're starting off very realist and, and, and then – how how does your style come out of that? But anyway, but people feel that way, and a lot of teachers feel that way, and a lot of colleges teach that way. What do you guys think so about that? So here's how I th- feel about that. I think that we're both talking about the same thing, but we're talking about what we're talking about is being more conscious of the of the uh, transition and the the evolution. And I think they're mm-hmm. they're preaching don't be conscious of it. Just let it happen naturally. Mm-hmm. But I think, yeah. well, you know, what was funny about that. Just one real quick, sorry to cut mm-hmm. you off. Um, but you know, we had some celebrity teachers at school and that, you know, they're, they're preaching this stuff. They're looking at a certain set of artists too, that, that influence how they paint and draw. But then in the, uh, in the undergrad, especially at junior, senior level, there was a whole group of ducklings that sort of followed those teachers and they were all talking about how natural their style developed and it was all the same. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to say <laughs> with the life drawing example, um, I feel like every school has a life drawing style. So you could look at different portfolios and be like, oh, that person went to SCAD. Or, oh, that person, you know, went to Art Institute or this person went to BYU. And yeah. it's because life drawing, you're doing the same thing. Your teacher is showing you this is how you life draw. You know, this is how you carve a character on the page. Right. And everybody's learning from that teacher because they don't have any other experience life drawing. Mm-hmm. So all automatically they're they're copying a style and their life drawing style is coming out of that. So um, I think to that, uh, I'll say when I was in life drawing, it was early in my early twenties, I asked my, my teacher, I said, you know, I'm worried about style. Like, how do I even develop a style? What, what do I do? And he, he dismissed me like right away, just shook his head. He's like, don't worry about style. Style is something that's going to happen when you're 30 and you're going to look back and realize, oh my gosh, I have a style. 
and it's not going to be anything that that you um you know that you forced into happening it's just going to come from you doing a lot of drawing and and uh and and he said don't worry about it and to a degree he was right um i felt like i didn't have a unique style to me i still feel like my style isn't that unique even though i'll see something that someone else drew obviously looking at my work and be like oh that person copied me mm -hmm. <laughs> right they're they're looking at jake jake parker's work and i don't take offense or anything i think it's flattering but um uh, but that when I see someone else doing my style, that's when I realize, oh, I have a style. Mm -hmm. Right. Though I'm not deliberately like thinking about that when I sit down to draw at this point. Mm -hmm. It used to be that I'm going to draw on this person's style. I'm going to draw on this person's style. I'm going to mix these two together and, and I'm going to make a drawing. And now when I sit down to draw, that stuff fades away. And I'm just like, I'm going to draw this character and this is what they look like. Mm -hmm. And my style comes through. So, yeah, you um, know, it's a, it's a good, it's a good point that you made about the life drawing stuff, because there was two teachers in the LA area when I was going to school and I'll, I'll go ahead and name them right now. Cause they're fantastic artists. There's Glenn Vilpu who teaches he, life drawing teacher uh, in the kind of in the animation slant of things. Mm -hmm. And he teaches this very gestural, very constructive method. And, the, and then the polar opposite of that is uh, Jeff Watts Atelier, you guys look either of those up i reckon highly recommend both of them but um they have a very tonal approach everything's lit and then you're basically shadow mapping and doing a very tonal approach to figure drawing and mm -hmm. it's so funny because if you go to either one of those teachers and schools it is all the students are drawing the exact same way even though they are just drawing figure drawing they're not even concerned about quote-unquote style or anything but they are following right down mm -hmm. uh you know doing exactly what the teachers are doing and you could you couldn't get them confused if you tried like they're so identifiable right so you're right they're, 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 just, they're just not talking about it but they're doing the exact same thing mm -hmm. yeah so i agree if you look at um do we have time for me to you look like you're under a schedule, Jake. Oh, uh, my wife just was saying something. I thought she was talking to me, but she was on the phone. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. So go for it, Will. I think that we're we're also talking about giving like a one size fits all advice, and I think mm -hmm. since we're all individuals, some advice is going to resonate with some people and speak to them artistically, and and then the same advice is not is going to conflict with someone else. If you take two two artists, that I'm thinking of right now, Eric Roman. The Caldecott winning mm -hmm. um, children's book illustrator and Peter Sis, um, mm -hmm. more of a, I guess, a editorial, but he also does children's books. Um, Peter Sis, his style, you can see it from a mile away. It's always the same, in in my opinion. I like, I just I just recognize yeah. his work right away. Eric Roman changes his style like a chameleon for every book. So if you did a Google search on Eric Roman and it's R O H M A N N. Um, you're going to see a different style on every single book he does. And I actually, st I stayed at his house once and visited his studio and, um, and he showed me and some other friends, uh, his method and he was working on, I can't remember the name of the book. It was the one with the tiger on the cover. Oh no. Oh, no. Yeah. He was working on that and he was actually, um, trying to invent a new style and he had no idea what it, what it was going to look like, but he was playing around with different things to make his, make new textures. And I, that was so foreign to the way that I think, you know? Mm. So I don't think that necessarily like the woman that gave us that email from Europe, um, that, that, you know, there's, there's different ways of She's looking from at UK. it from, yeah, from, yeah. I, I don't think I've seen an artist go so far in terms of style. I mean, you couldn't tell that this between books, that this is the same I person know, in crazy. any capacity. It's crazy. I, I, mm -hmm. I didn't know that, that he had that big of a swing of style. Some of it is literally photorealistic and, and rendered. Yeah. And the others is kind of clunky line, line cartoony look. Oh yeah. man, that's, that's and interesting. you know to be f to be fair to to the rest of us, you know he won the Caldecott for my friend Rabbit, and you know when you win the Caldecott, that gives you. Didn't we do an episode on the Caldecott? Yeah, okay, we did. Um, you know, I mean, like there's a grip of money that's coming in for the rest of your life. But he also won. He also won the Caldecott for Time Flies. Right. 
<laughs> which is the rendered book. And I know. And so, so it, and so when you have fair. more money, to me, you have more freedom um, because you have more time. And when you have more time, mm-hmm. you can experiment and play with mm-hmm. your paint alchemy. And when you when you don't and you're worried about, you know, putting food on the table, you kind of have to probably kind of stay in the same style um, because if if your experiments aren't working out, that's going to cost you financially. So, well, that's right, true. So, I wanted to ask you guys: What styles have you seen um, come and then go at, in, during your illustration career? The advertising Def- slick stuff. Yeah, yeah, the real real rendered stuff. The um, Air, the, the airbrush airbrush detail. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then the Joe Soren era, oh, yeah. uh, early to early two thousands, late nineteen nineties was was definitely um, Joe Soren. If you guys look him up, you'll you'll mm-hmm. see that style. Um, and then I don't know. I don't know if I yeah, want to. There's say like a what Jake thinking. Parker style that's kind of going out right now. <laughs> <laughs> well no, there's the I, there's the Carson Ellis one that we're deep in. I've talked about it before. We're deep in the Carson Ellis John Classen. Well, I don't era. I don't want to go there yet, but in your career though, you've seen like is there so Mary Grand Prix, right? Uh-huh. She drew Harry Potter, right. illustrated Harry Potter almost fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. At least do you, do you see her um doing do you see her style still happening currently now? Like not as much, not at all. No, no. Everything okay. has moved in the children's book world, at least a lot more primitive um, mm-hmm. and less colorful. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so her, I don't think that today she would be hired to do that. That was the time that mm-hmm. was perfect for her. And um, you think she's not getting work? No, no, no. I think she's getting work. It's, I just think that, well, her style has totally evolved. She's doing, work that doesn't look like that at all right now i haven't seen her work i gotta look it up she's doing a lot of um what looks like gallery work too more um abstract type stuff what about um do you remember that that the book the day jimmy's boa constrictor ate the wash that was from the 80s um it was kind of like a a line like a black line drawing with watercolor added to it um do you see much of that happening not as much anymore like that Not like the much. alexander's terribly horribly rotten no good day yeah uh, a little Judith, bit of that Judith too. Judith kind of stuff like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it's funny how things and the, the hard part about when you're talking about style and styles evolving and styles becoming less in demand and going out of style is if you're the artist that and you feel like your style is going out of style that's a tough place to be because where do you go from there? If, if that's exactly what you love doing, you know, if you've come mm-hmm. up with your list of things that just do it for you, what do you do then? <laughs> well, and I think, <laughs> I think we, Lee brought up a good point in that he himself is still evolving and I see you evolving too. Yeah. Well, like I look at your little people, like your little, um, uh-huh. heroes, that's, uh, that's a step away from what you've been doing. Yeah. And then I got the, the Bonaparte series with that. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I what I I think the point I want to make here is that styles come and go, trends come and go, and but that doesn't mean you as an illustrator have to come and go. Mm-hmm. Um, I think what we talked about here in developing your initial style is also a pathway to um, evolving your style as you get older and as you your career advances as as an illustrator. So what would you say the the contemporary style is today? like what's what's you know every other children's book look like yeah i mean it's it's this it's heavily influenced by i think carson ellis and, and john class and it's a it's a very clean edged textured look and the, but there's a certain couple of things that really go with that look there's a certain rock that everybody's drawing that's a round top rock um mm-hmm. i don't know there's just some some high some 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 ingredients that I guess that go with that particular style. Uh, and not that it's not good, by the way, I would do, I do want to add, I think it's lovely. It's amazing work. Um, but there is, you know, as uh, again, as I go through my Instagram feed, sometimes I think it's one person and it's somebody else. Mm-hmm. And then I'll <laughs> think it's okay. It's that person. The next time I see it, Nope, it's somebody else. And, um, what, what the, so, I would describe the style as flat blocky shapes, two dimensional shapes, 
highly textured. So almost as if they're doing, you know, the characters on some sort of different kind of paper and with watercolor mixed in with it and not very much line work added to it, almost collage Mm -hmm. like, and then putting it all together. And I know this stuff is, it's like a mixed media. It really is like they're scanning textures, they're scanning watercolors, and then they're putting them together in Photoshop and, and creating like these finished pieces out of them. Um, that's, that's, I see a lot of that happening. However, you also see, um, uh, almost in a, in a handful of, of books, especially award winners, um, sometimes they'll, they'll be the exact opposite. Um, there was a, a, a winner a couple of years ago for a Caldecott. It may have been the, the, the winner or maybe been the, an honor, but it was about, um, railroads or the train, the train system. Do you guys remember that? I, I remember again? that. Yeah, I remember the one with the train on the cover. The engine. Yeah. Um, what, what, I forget the, the name of that I'll, I'll illustrator. It. I'm, I'm going to look it up here. Um, but I, it struck me as, oh, this is so cool that this particular style is winning, um, is winning an award when I'm seeing so many bestsellers and so many award winners that are in this more collage um, uh, you know, textured, textured style. Mm-hmm. So let me, let me just look it up here. And while I'll, you're looking at that up, I just want to add that, that, so I looked up Mary Grant Prix's current work and mm-hmm. I just texted Will and Jake, I'll, maybe I'll put this in the show notes if you guys want to see it, but Mary Grant Prix's doing paintings exactly like the, some of the fine art stuff I'm doing right now. And I have never seen her work before. And so it's an interesting point to bring up that sometimes people land in the same spot well, I've never seen her gallery stuff before, but I wouldn't you guys say that the pictures I just sent you are in the same world? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean they're almost. Crazy. Like, I mean it's so close, and I've never seen her work, her gallery stuff before. Yeah, but we ended up in are, the. You're drinking from the same well. Mm-hmm. I think. <laughs> that is so weird. I have to look and see how she landed there because there is. I mean, I'm making this stuff up without a ton of influence. I'm kind of just sitting at my art desk and just playing with shapes and stuff like that but her work looks exact if i put them together and said that was one artist you couldn't i don't think anybody would Mm -hmm. doubt it yeah so the 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 caldecott winner for 2014 was by brian floca i think is how you pronounce it and it's the engine that's coming right Uh, straight at you yeah it's titled locomotive and it's a very much a linear style uh not not highly rendered but very very detailed um so so what i want to say about that is um, as you're developing your style and as you're looking at what's contemporary and what can get you work, you know, next week or next year, um, think about what, what you actually want to do with your career. Do you want to be, um, you know, it, it could be just as, as simple as I just want to make money. <laughs> I want to, I want to have, uh, you know, three books lined up and not have to worry about, you know, my next project because, um, Everybody wants to work with me. And it could be that mimicking or not even mimicking, but, but uh, developing a style that's very much contemporary could be the, the, the thing for you. But there's another thing, too, and that is it could be that developing your own style or bringing a style that you see somewhere else into children's books could be the thing that sets you apart from everyone. So I think what it is is, is you've got art directors who – they want either something familiar or they want something wildly different, you know, or they want something different enough that it doesn't feel familiar, but it still goes with, with the, uh, uh, with the subject matter. And so, um, and so there's just different strategies here. I'm not going to say what strategy is the best strategy or what you should do right now. But, um, uh, I think for personally, for like the three of us finding a style that we like, that's appropriate for, how we like to work has been a way for us to get work. I don't think we've chased trends or we've chased um, a particular style. Um, We've sort of done what we found appealing and the art director found that and said, that's what we want for this, for this book. But we were also looking at people who are already getting work from art directors who had also vetted the work that we're looking at. So there's Mm -hmm. kind of a pre-built in approval process Mm -hmm. in how we developed, if that makes sense. 
Yeah, yeah. And I, I should say, too, switching to the like pen and ink style, because I did several children's books, which were like highly rendered um, with pencil and, and some Photoshop, like lighting and color to them. Uh, and switching to the ink style, like I had to do several like ink drawings in that style and show them to art directors and say, this is the style I want to work in. And it took, you know, it just took one of them to say, okay, yeah, let's do it that style for me to then start getting other work in that style. Uh, I know, I've never have- had, I've never had an art director ever say anything about the work that I turn in, in terms of style. They, they either like it or they want some changes, but I've never had one say, Oh, this is different. <laughs> Even, you know, from, from the uh-huh. first book I did to now, nobody's ever mentioned it. And I'm always really worried about it when I'm sending something in like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm using watercolor now instead of acrylic and collage instead of whatever I was doing before. No, no lighting is falling on these characters at all where I used to light quite heavily, never noticed it, never said a thing. So I I don't know. (laughs) I think, I don't know. It might come down to the way you draw a character and the way you do compositions. Like those haven't changed. True. Uh, It's just, again, it's just like the rendering is what's. But I think a lot of times when people think they make a style jump, they didn't really. (laughs) Yeah. It's not as, it is not as drastic as you think Mm -hmm. it is. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, I, I'm just going to wrap it up there. I think was, this I was think a good we, one. I really like this subject. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks That's for fine. your input and your thoughts, guys. It, it was really cool to hear, hear your perspective. Uh, th- you know, three different points of perspective on this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. That, that hit on the sliding glass door. Yep. Has changed your. Hey, Jake, <laughs> Jake right, who buddy. sponsors this podcast? I was just getting oh. to that. I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us. And right now they're all clicking off and they're moving <laughs> on to whatever podcast is next. But <laughs> if you're going to hang around and listen to the end, you're going to learn that this podcast is sponsored by svslearn.com, where becoming a great illustrator starts. And we've got a ton of cool um, illustration classes there. Sign up, try it out for a few months, see how you like it. Um, we're working on a children's book um, curriculum that could take you through, I don't know, 20 different lessons on every aspect of doing children's books. So that's coming this next year, something that we're currently working on. So, um, uh, subscribe now to get, I think, to kind of get locked in on our early pricing for that. Cause I know it's going to go up with the, with the children's books thing. Anyway, your hosts have been Will Terry. Uh, you can find his work at willterry.com and go follow him on Instagram at willterryart. And we also have Lee White. His website is leewhiteillustration.com. And you can follow him at on Instagram at leewhiteillo. And I'm Jake Parker. You can find my work at mrjakeparker.com. And you can find me on Instagram at Jake Parker. Okay, podcast is edited by Alex Sugg. That's Sugg with two Gs. Um, and you can find his work at alexsugg.com. And our podcast is uh, produced by Tanner Garlic. He's the one that gets it on the air so that you can – I don't know, on the air, on the internet, <laughs> so you can listen to it however you listen to it. So we thank Tanner for that. If you like this episode, share it around. Uh, you know, podcasts live and die by word of mouth. And so we'd love it if you um, you just let people know about what you're learning here and what you like about this podcast. We'd really appreciate that. And we'd love how many people have written in and emailed us and told us uh, what they're learning from the podcast and how much it helps them. So we hope that uh, today's episode was was no different. So, um, if this is your first time listening, please subscribe so you can get um, notif- notified when the next podcast drops. And uh, and I think that's it. Oh, go to svslearn.com and click on the forums, and we have um, a thread for each of the the podcasts that we've done, so you could see what other illustrators and other artists think about um, the topic that we've talked about today. All right, I think that's it, and we will uh, see you guys next time. Bye.